Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Austin High School here deep in the heart of this state's capital. We are here just seven minutes away from your next installment of Trojan Basketball on Vibe Live. We've got a good one for you tonight. It's the Trojans on the road rocking the alternates here and uh, what I believe is a new gym for the Maroons. I've been, uh, I've done some games here at Austin High before, never in this gym. Looks nice, very fancy, although they have, don't have it all suited out for, uh, <laughs> for, for electrical equipment yet. As you see up there, you got a, a beautiful little perch, but no power up there yet. So we are relegated to the one in the middle of the court. Thankfully able to have some extension cords, but we will be courtside for tonight's game. Should be an exciting one. Any corner three is going to be right in our eyes here. Also going to mean that we are going to be on ball watch. Uh, already been hit a couple times in these warm-ups. No problem, though. Just the nature of the game. But back to the matter at hand, the Austin Maroons are the home team rocking the home whites. Looking ahead at them, they are 5-10 uh, and ten on the season. Anderson enters at 8-7. and seven. The record perhaps not matching uh, what this Anderson team has brought on the court though this season. Had a couple tough close losses and uh, some teams that were just flat out ranked ahead of them that they were not able to overcome that ranking deficit. Although Anderson did deal with some injury earlier uh, in the season with Nate Langley suffering an ankle injury during the Anderson Classic Tournament. He is back. He will be out on the court assuming he steps back into his starting role but Austin High as we said they enter at 5-10 and ten. This is a Maroons team that is coming coming off a victory. Their last game was last Saturday, a tournament game against Elgin. They won that one 47 to 37. But coming in below 500, this is a game that Anderson is going to want to win after struggling themselves over the last few games. Anderson enters tonight riding a three-game losing streak going back to the Anderson Classic. They dropped that one against Rockwall as well as Goose Creek and then the one at home on the following Tuesday against Westlake. All some tough opponents for the Trojans to have to take out. Unable to do it, but now they enter at eight and seven, looking to get things back on the road with a struggling Austin High team before we get right back to it tomorrow morning. Anderson gonna be traveling down to Buda tomorrow morning. Uh, game should be at 12.30 down there at Hayes. Gonna be first time that Anderson sees Hayes with a new name change, formerly of course the Rebels going to have to <laughs> change that considering all the baggage of the past. And they're now the Hayes Hawks, so opt for the classic alliteration. But with that, we are four minutes away from getting started here. Should be a good one. Anderson back at full strength for the most part. Vizarian, it looks like, still will not be suited out for tonight's game, but he may be able to get in. Well, he's, wearing the, he's wearing the uniform. He's just doing mostly passing from underneath the basket. So we will see if he gets uh, into the rotation or into the game here. He definitely one of the key parts of the rotation for this Anderson team at the beginning of the season. Some some shooting ability off the bench. Kick it to him outside on the wing. He can knock it down for you. And that's a valuable skill to have. As they say, defense wins championships, but you've also got to score points. Uh, and Anderson has no trouble getting stops, but oftentimes they do struggle with getting points. So a boost to the offense back with Langley into the starting lineup. Hopefully Ben can be back as well. But we are just minutes away from what should be a good contact, uh, good contest. Austin coming in. They've got a little bit more size than Anderson. They've got a big fellow by the name of Lucas Miller, big number 54. His Austin team has got a lot of weird numbers. Uh, I can't, can't profess to be a historian of Austin high school basketball. Uh, I know they have that one NFL receiver. I think he's on the Raiders? Zay something? That's not helpful. But this Austin High team only got one uh, player with a number under 20. Got all of the 50s filled up. They have a 50, a 51, a 52, a 53, a 54, and a 55 on their roster. Very different than a team like Anderson who doesn't have anybody above the number 35. They opt for the traditionally cooler numbers. But Anderson wearing their alternates for the first time that we've been able to see this season. Austin High just sticking with the home whites. Macroon, uh, excuse me. Macroons. I'm hungry, I guess. Maroons across the chest. Maroon numbers with black accents on the shorts and black trim on the lettering on the jerseys. For Anderson, going to be coming out in the away gray alternate. Still have your classic yellow and blue trim for them. 
but should be a good one. Coach Pittsford looking to bounce back and get his team a victory before the short layoff. Just one, uh, not even a day, just a couple hours for Anderson before they're going to have to go and play their next game tomorrow morning. Uh, after that, we'll have a little bit of a layoff until Tuesday, and then we have got, uh, I believe the New Year rolls around at that point. Anderson may be getting into uh, some more tournament play, but don't believe that we will be at that tournament. I think they have a Cedar Ridge game coming up the Tuesday after uh, the Christmas. But now both teams headed over to their benches. Going to get these starting lineups here in just a moment. For now, I believe we'll uh, get the national anthem playing, and, and we should have a good one ahead of us on a Friday night. It's a beautiful night in Austin, although it is December. Hopefully we were in for a little bit more cold at this point, but no dice. Going to go ahead and send it over to the PA now. 73 degrees, 7.30 tip. We are good to go. Right out of the way. Love the technical difficulties. I agree that Macklemore should probably be the national anthem. No, that's not true. Remember when he won like album of the year over Kendrick Lamar that one time? That was bananas. 
Anywho, find that a lot of teams play that Alan Parsons project track, the one that the Bulls use, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like very few teams are actually as good as the 90s Bulls. But anyway, I'm kind of a real tall kid. Six foot seven, Lucas Miller in the middle. We talked about him a little bit pregame. But now here we go. Taking our time with this one. <laughs> You're getting Mitchell for a little bit of tomfoolery and ballyhoo, but now we are underway with the ball as Edward Gonzalez on the wing. He gets it back out there. Now into the right corner. Don't have the best angle on that side, but now back up top. Now swing up to the top of the key. It's number 35, John Torres. Now O'Shea with it. Torres is going to drive in, get caught in the air. They get it back to the corner. Now crossing back, O'Shea has it. Now up top is Miller. Torres in it with it inside. They lose it, and that's going to be out of bounds. Lucas Miller had it on the baseline, and it crossed that line. So Anderson starts out with the turnover, forcing that one on the defensive side, but now they'll get it going here. Here's Mike Wagner dribbling it up. He's being hounded in the backcourt, so we'll have a little bit of press from Austin High to get things going. Here's Langley with it up top. Love to see him back in the lineup. Here's Wagner. He's looking for him on a pocket pass. Wasn't quite there. But here's Whitlow. Dribbling around, kicking into the corner. Here's Langley. He loves to drive baseline. Nice pass into the corner for Blackerby, but instead it'll be Wagner. It's going to be no good. You could get a good angle of that baseline pass from Nate there. That was great. Now back outside for Wagner into the corner. It's Whitlow back for Langley. Now Nate will try a triple. Cash. Welcome back. Nate Langley opens things up with a three-pointer from the corner, and Anderson has its first lead of the game. It's 3-0. Let's hope they can keep that trend going. Now into the post. It's the big man. He takes Langley all the way to the basket and kind of throws up a clumsy layup, but now Whitlow passes ahead to Blackerby, and Bennett loves to take these, and one. Bennett Blackerby never saw a transition opportunity that he didn't love, and that's fine because he makes it. I mean, I don't think he's missed one of those tough shots in transition, and that one he gets the foul. So now five points for Anderson. Bennett to the line, try to make it six. And he can't do it, but... Still a good start for Anderson. Pick up a foul. Whitlow gets it back, and he lays it in. Mitchell Whitlow over the top of Lucas Miller. Size doesn't matter for Anderson right now. 7 to nothing. just two minutes in. Bringing the ball up. It's Edward Gonzalez. Now into the corner. That's Torres. They get it to the big man, Miller, underneath. Well, takes it right at Langley. Same result, except this time he gets it to go. Goes right through him. Gets an easy look, but that time he was able to knock it down, and that's going to be the only... Trouble for Anderson here tonight so far. And on the other end, Whitlow is going to head to the line. He got fouled. And after Austin High opens up scoring on one end, Mitchell Whitlow picks up the foul and will be shooting free throws. The deathly quiet of the free throw. Feels like a nature documentary. First free throw runs out. Or maybe ASMR, either one. Whichever one you like more. We have our first substitution of the game. It's going to be Weston Boric into the game for Lucas Miller. Another guy with some size for the Maroons. So after missing the first, Mitchell going to head back to the line for one more. So Anderson starts off one for three from the line for the game. But that's fine because they're up eight to two. Francis nearly getting the steal on O'Shea, but they get it to Torres. Now coming across is Gonzalez. Gonzalez now kicks it to the corner. Torres got Wagner in the air. He'll pull up from the baseline. That missed everything way too strong. Now here comes Blackerby pushing the other direction, passes it off to Francis. Now Jack with it out here on the wing. Whitlow, he wanted it to go to Blackerby, but instead he'll reverse it across the court, and it's now Langley in the post. Mitchell turns, spins, goes up with it, and gets it to go once again. The master of the and one, it's, it's Nate Langley. How many times have we seen him get to the basket? The hoop and the harm. I kind of like this angle. It's a lot of fun. And Anderson likes to do a lot of stuff on the baseline. So it'll be even better tonight. Nate misses the f uh, misses short on that one, hit the front of the rim. And Anderson now moves to 25% on free throws in the early going, but still a eight-point lead for them. And eight-point lead. 
Now into the corner. That's Boric. Now he gets it over to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, and he's going to be fouled. They got, I believe it was uh, Wagner there getting on the reach, and that is the call on the floor. So it'll stay on this end. That's just Anderson's first team foul. Three already for Austin. They're trying to get it in. They do. It's Torres. Torres back outside to Boric. Now here's Gonzalez once again. Gonzalez spins into the post, goes right to Wagner, and he's going to pick up another foul. Mike Wagner, two quick fouls in the span of about 10 seconds. So now might have to go to, uh, to a bench option here. As Gonzalez knocks down the first. Right now, Coach Pittsford opting to leave Wagner in with those two fouls. Gonzalez shows the Trojans how to do a thing or two. Knocks down both free throws. Here's Blackerby out the pass from Wagner. Gets it to go again. A lot of soft contact underneath from, uh, from Austin High. And if you're going to foul someone going to the basket, foul them hard. That's the third and one of the night as we are back into quiet time. Bennett gets that one to go. Satisfied clap of the hands. Much more fun to convert the N1 as Gonzalez crosses over, gets it in the corner for Boric. Now back outside, it's O'Shea. O'Shea going to drive in. Kick to the corner, it's in. It's Trey Mendez. One of the starters for this team, getting one of his first touches of the game. Now driving in, throwing it up and in is John Torres. That's his first basket of the night. Now Austin High getting a few more easy baskets on the other end, but here's another easy ooh, shot for Langley, affected uh, by Edward Gonzalez on that one. Some good defense, and that's going to be a turnover by Austin High. Looked unforced. Don't have the best angle on these things, although we do have some great. <laughs> I'll be able to tell you if the foul calls are right, at least uh, on this end of the court. And all the ones on Anderson aren't fouls, and all the ones on Austin are fouls. Remember. So here's Francis with it up top. Gets it to Langley. Roll into the basket. Got three guys in the air. Floats it up. Misses it. That's the second missed layup in a row for Nate Langley. Showing off some rust underneath after showing off the shooting touch from the perimeter. Here's Gonzalez working on Campbell Duncan, who's into the game for the first time. Francis able to affect that shot. Now here's Blackerby pushing into transition. Now it's Francis with it on the wing. Pass fake, shot attempt is no good. It was short, but Bennett picked it up. We'll call that a pass for Francis. But Jack takes it all the way to the basket himself and gets it to go. Makes up for his own mistake and gets his first field goal of the game. Anderson's up 15 to six. Back outside for O'Shea, he's gonna pull up. Can't connect, here's Blackerby. Lobs it ahead. Here's Langley on the other end. Nate's going to get the layup to go this time. Nate Langley, seven points in the first quarter. That's going to be a timeout from Austin High. Anderson pushing it to double figures early, 17-6. Going to go ahead and keep it here for our first break of the bro or, uh, Yeah, first break of the game, not our first break of the broadcast. Right now, everyone getting involved for Anderson Wagner being his usual pesky defensive self, getting everybody involved. Bennett Blackerby with five, Nate Langley with seven. Mitch Whitlow has three, and Francis has two. That's it for Anderson, but four out of five starters already in the scoring column. Austin High, uh, three players scoring each of its uh, six points. John Torres and Lucas Miller both getting a basket underneath. Edward Gonzalez knocking down a pair of free throws. Now here we go, get a little zoom so you can see this end a little better. Here's Gonzalez, they get it back up top, it's Ian Mitchell. Now into the corner, it's Weston Ezel. Staying it out there on the wing, they get it to Gonzalez in the corner. Working his way around, they kick it up top to O'Shea. Now here it is, cut across, that's number 52, Ian Mitchell once again. Back up top for O'Shea. Driving in, kick to the corner. It's a shot from three. That's going to be no good, too short. That's going to be batted around, and it looks like it's going to stay here. There you go. Now 
now ready to inbound it. For Austin, is going to be Edward Gonzalez. He does. He just gets it into his L. Now driving in, kicking to the corner. Another drive after the kick. Here's Gonzalez. Now back out to the wing. Mitchell with it. Now back in the corner, Azell. Azell almost lost it into the Trojan bench, but Gonzalez has it now. Into the corner, deep into the corner. Now driving in is O'Shea, right at Blackerby. O'Shea got caught in the air. Bennett bumped him. No call on the contact. And here come the Trojans pushing ahead. Here's Campbell Duncan, rifle to the corner. Bennett Blackerby looks good from here. No good, that one. But I love that angle. Good job, Mitchell Whitlow, diving to the floor, and he came up with it, but we'll see the possession arrow. Coach Pittsford wanted the timeout. He doesn't get it. But the jump ball keeps possession here for the Troiani. Which is the Latin plural of, uh, of Trojan. A little bit of fun. A little bit of linguistic fun. As Anderson has an 11-point lead in the first frame. Still two minutes to go in the first quarter. You got some more... Ex-Trojan players in the gym here. Always traveling well. I believe we got more Trojan fans in the stands than Austin High fans. It's the perk of all these non-district games that you get to play within the city. Easy to travel just right down Mopac. Here's Bennett Blackerby. Kicks it to the corner. Campbell Duncan going to catch and shoot. That's good. Already matching his total from last game is Campbell Duncan. Three points in the first quarter. Now working it around to Zell. He gets it into Gonzalez, and Gonzalez is going to get the foul on Campbell Duncan. Now Gonzalez trying to get it in, and they are just able to. O'Shea with it on the perimeter. Gets it outside, now into the corner. Gonzalez with it, driving in. Back outside. Now onto the short corner, it's Mitchell. Mitchell now driving in on Langley. Good pass to find it, but he was staying out of bounds. Boric had it underneath the basket, kind of hovering in the dunker spot. But instead, it's a turnover. Another turnover forced by Anderson, and we have some subs. It's going to be Bennett Blackaby out of the game. He'll be his first rest of the ball game. CP3 into the ball game. His first minutes of action. Here's Francis trying to get around his L. He does. Hi, Campbell. Now with it up top. Here's Langley driving in. Loses it going up, and that's going to be a foul call, so it should be free throws for Nathaniel Langley. Nate's already got seven. That's the fifth team foul against the Maroons. Trojans just have three. Still 125 here in the first quarter. Knocks down the first. Ooh. Sorry about that. Virus protection alert. Here's Edward Gonzalez. We're moving the ball up the floor for the Maroons. He kicks it back out to the big man, Mitchell. Now Izell driving in. Gets it into the short corner. That's for Boric. Now Boric posting up Langley. A double team comes from Duncan. That's a nice job from the young man. Back outside for Gonzalez. Now with Zell. Into the corner for Mitchell. Back up top for Gonzalez. Gonzalez driving in. Spinning on Francis. Kicks it to the corner. He'll drive in. Back out to Gonzalez. And they're going to get a blocking foul against Jack. Looked like they might have banged knees. We'll have some substitutions. Jackson Gill. End of the game. And oh, man. Let's go. Legend Durst in for Austin High. Number 23, Legend Durst. Only Legend Durst I know is Fred. Just kidding. Here's Gonzalez. Outside for Durst. Now here's Azell back outside to Gonzalez. Kick it over. It's Mitchell. Mitchell going to take it in. Now back outside for Gonzalez. Anderson doing a good job cutting off these driving lanes. Corey tried to take a charge. Instead, it'll just be a missed three. Durst tried to get the board. Here's Armour. Almost loses it, and they're going to get him for a travel. Looks like he got it away just in time, but the official from the back not going to give him the call, and it'll be a turnover for Anderson. A little tough to get the camera movement from this spot. Now Gonzalez taking it up for Austin. 
into the corner. Zell. There's Borich on the perimeter. Kicks it over to Durst. Durst driving in, loses it. Now kicks it back out, and that goes through the hands of Mitchell. That'll be out of bounds. Trojan ball with 16 seconds left in the frame. Anderson looks like they're going to get the final shot here. And with that being the case, good job, everybody, in their minutes. But now it's time for the starters to come in and take that final shot. Trojan 5 back into the game. It's Wagner with 16 seconds remaining. Seven seconds left. Wagner crosses over. Over to Blackerby. Bennett going to take the three. That's good. Some hot shooting early from this Anderson team. They've already got several threes under their belt. Bennett Blackerby and Nate Langley both with eight points. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. A minute left on the clock for us for our break. Going to go ahead and take it. I'd like to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast for Anderson Basketball, Howie Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech. And for us here at Vibe, we'd like to thank the people at Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com. You can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. And with that, we are ready for the start of the second quarter. Hopefully we get a... Mr. Maru sighting in the gym tonight. I see with this new gym and with the new rebrand, uh, I'm not seeing a lot of Mr. Maru love, and I think that is a travesty. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I would invite you to Google it. It's the funniest-looking little guy, little mascot. He's just a little puffball. His name is Mr. Maru, and I love him very much. Hopefully we get to see a little Mr. Maru tonight, but right now it's not looking so good for me. But Anderson leads it 25-6. to six. And so Austin High will start with the ball. They've got the possession arrow, and they'll get it in. Francis nearly trying to come away with a steal on that one. And on the other end, Gonzalez with it. Gets it into Durst. Now Mitchell up top working on Page, who's checked into the first uh, for the first time, along with Fred Dale. Here's Durst driving in, coughs it up, and into the hands of Jack Francis. Now Jack with a breakaway chance. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He takes it in and gets it to go. Jack wanted contact. It looked like Durst might have hit him from behind. Good job by Austin High getting back on that one. It looks like Jack had a breakaway opportunity, but able to come in and make a difference. But Jack able to knock down the shot to push it to 21 points. And another steal on the other end. Whitlow takes this one away, and he's going to push. Here's Mit Mitchell going to take it all the way into the paint. Held it onto it for a little too long as Zell now has it. Jack almost with a chance to take it away, but instead it'll be Mitchell sprinting down the court for the Maroons. Mitchell into the lane, caught up with it. Now Gonzalez with a wide open chance. Instead he'll pass it up and drive in and turn it over. Don't be afraid of that open three. We've got the big fella back in. Lucas Miller, two points. There's Colin Page, the Havoc man. Here's Jack bringing it up. They get it to him. Now he's going to drive baseline all the way to the basket. Easy, too. He can hit a hole. Wonder where that comes from. Now here's Mitchell driving in. Ooh, almost got away with the travel. Instead, the fancy footwork gets the two points. Just the third field goal of the game for Austin High School, and they've got eight in the game. Six and a half to go in the half. Francis bringing the ball up. He gets into the lane, caught up in the air. Good no-look fine for Fred Dale. His three-pointer's good. Anderson looks like it's going to be one of those games for the Trojans. Everyone's knocking down, uh, firing on all cylinders, knocking down from the perimeter. There you go. 32-8. They've quadrupled the Maroon score, and that's a good foul from Page to avoid the easy deuce. Seven Trojans in the scoring column early in this one. It's 32 to 8. And this looks like a game that Anderson has been ready for. They have been off for a good long while. 
So that first foul shot is good, and Ian Mitchell, the team high of three. This is the first game for Anderson since that Westlake game that was last Tuesday. So they haven't played in about 10 days here. And it <laughs> looks to me like they spent all their time practicing to beat Austin High because they're doing a good job of it right now. Austin High finally into double figures. Two minutes into the third quarter, Anderson leads it 32 to 10. Francis, he's going to have some trouble getting it up across the half court line, but he's able to. Here's Langley. Now they get it back to Jack. Jack's just going to pull up. And uh, this team's hot. This team is red hot. Another triple for the Anderson Trojans. That's the first one for Jack. He's got seven now. Driving in. Kicking it under to Miller. That's a good find, but passed out of a good post shot. Now they try to get it back to him. And Colin Page diving on the floor. Mitchell Whitlow diving on the floor. It's all over. And Anderson just turns it over. Jack had a chance but it went off the foot of Langley. They both kind of going for that ball. Creates a turnover for Anderson, and it goes the other way. So Izell with the inbound. They get it into the big fella Miller. Now up top with it, that's Torres. They get it back to Gonzalez. Now one of the post for Miller. Good pass. He's got, a, he's got some good vision underneath. It's a foul on Anderson, getting the ball to John Torres. But... Lucas Miller has, a, has some vision from the post. Should run more stuff through him. Just get him a post touch and try and make something happen. Just pass out of it. Like uh, if you ever watch the Denver Nuggets, that's kind of how they handle Jokic. You get him on a post up, and he's not even necessarily thinking about scoring. Not, I mean, not to compare Lucas Miller to Nikola Jokic. That's an unfair comparison for anybody. One of the best five guys in the league right now. But here's Francis. Blackerby driving baseline. He's going to step back into a short corner jumper. That's going to be no good. And we have a rebound. Uh, loose ball foul. Looks like it's going to go against Dale. So Fred picks up the foul. Now Austin High in the bonus. They don't get the free throws on the loose ball foul, though, I don't believe. A Congress of officials. Wonder what they're talking about. 35 to 12, 510 to go in the half. Uh, oh, I guess you do get, maybe it's just offensive fouls that you don't get the one and one, but that's the seventh team foul going against Anderson, so they should shoot. So that makes the foul on Dale look a little bit worse as all the way on the under end of the court, they're getting free throws. Ready to take the shot. It's John Torres who just hit a pair on the other end. But he misses the front end. Miller went up for it, and that's got to be an over the back on the big fella. Yeah. Mitchell, good job getting the towel out. No moisture on the court, please. I miss Andre Roberson. Deep cut. All right. Feeling nice. Feeling loose on a Friday afternoon, on a Friday evening, I should say. Anderson with a big lead early. 23 points for Anderson. Now back outside for Langley from the Francis Drive. Langley spins into the post and lays it in, Nate Langley. Uh, I think Nate missed playing basketball. He's got 10. Here's O'Shea. Now driving in, pulling up. Shot's no good. Miller, just too tall for Fred Dale, gets the rebound. Shot was no good by Trey Mendez, and that's the second, ba uh, second basket by Miller. Fresh off the board. Here's Francis driving up. Jack putting the ball on the court, getting inside the lane, spinning. He's going to fade, and that's a beautiful jumper from Jack Francis. Anderson putting on the moves right now. Everybody clicking. Nine points for Jack. Ten points for Langley. Now here's Miller just going right at Dale. Shot's no good. He's a little clumsy. Doesn't have the best touch right around the basket, but the passing is, is where it, I've been most impressed with him tonight. Here's Blackerby off the handoff. That's no good. Finally, they miss one, and Miller gets the rebound. Blackerby going to get called for a whistle, trying to steal that one away. Ah! 
Trojans currently leading it by 25. We're still halfway through second quarter. So if you like to see uh, everybody play, I feel like tonight might be a good night. It'll be another one and one. Last time Austin was down here, they missed the front end. But Graham O'Shea won't allow that. He's got one point. So now four starters for Austin High into the scoring column. Mike Wagner for Anderson picked up those two early fouls. Haven't really seen him since, except for, uh, for a chance on that final shot. But that's two points at the line for Austin High, and that's really been most of their offense today. It's just free throws, and they've been knocking them down. Got to give them credit. Here's Campbell Duncan, gets it to Langley. Love Langley under the basket. Gill from three. No good. Rebound Nate underneath. Spinning, laying it up and laying it in. The height of Lucas Miller not bothering Nate Langley. He is used to beasting underneath. He's got 12 in the first half. It's 41 to 16. Now here is Torres going to shoot. No, excuse me. Now Torres with the basketball. Into the corner. It's Graham O'Shea. No good. Rebound batted away from... Nate almost saved it to Gill, but he couldn't quite do it, and that's going to be a foul underneath on Gill. Looked like it could have been a jump, but instead they're going to call the foul on Gill. Anderson now getting uh, not getting the whistle here tonight, but yeah, I mean they're up, they're up by a lot of points anyway. So here's Miller at the line. Beautiful. He's got a better jumper than he did, uh, not a jumper, he's got a better shooting stroke than he does uh, post hook. These free throws keeping Austin high alive. They've got 18, Lucas Miller has six. Now pass ahead, here's Price, Anderson. Now behind the head pass to Wagner, who's back into the game. Mike can't get the layup to go. Now on the other way comes Austin High School, Trey Mendez with the board. Now over to Miller. Driving in, it's Torres. Back outside, shot from deep, no good. One another miss from Mendez, and Anderson's coming the other way. Armour gets it ahead to Wagner. Mike working around the Langley screen. He'll cut it back the other way into the lane. Now back outside for Duncan. He hit one before. Can't make it two in a row. Under three to go, and Anderson's cooled off a little bit from outside the arc. Now it's O'Shea. Armour defending him. Gets him to go baseline. Cuts it off. That's a good defensive stop from Derek Armour, and Miller able to save it. Now here's Mendez. Steps back. Lost his dribble. Now... It's back outside for Torres. Torres driving in at Wagner, just throws up a wild shot. It's no good. Rebrown batted away from Langley, but Wagner corralled it. Now coming the other way is Armour. He loses it, gets it back. He's caught in the corner. Now it's back to Wagner, and Anderson's going to have a chance to reset, and that's poked out of bounds by Graham O'Shea. It'll stay right here. Two minutes to go. And Langley's going to check out. 12 points in the first half for him, a monster half from Nate Langley. Pulling out the calculator app, and I'll tell you it's a 23 point deficit. Hole into the game now. They get it underneath, and Wagner turns it over. Now pushing the other way. Here's a Zell. And they're going to call Anderson for another foul. Here, uh,. I don't think these refs know this game isn't on TV, so they're not uh, have to, having to think about ratings. But Trey Mendez will head to the line. No, excuse me, it's a Zell to the line. First free throw off the back iron and in. No more fouls to give for, uh, for either team. Of course, Anderson now into the double bonus. They've been there for a moment. Uh, but now Anderson will be on the one and one the next time they get a foul call. Lead down to 21, as that's two points for Weston Izell. Wagner bring the ball up. You get it to Armour. Now back outside Price. Couldn't quite handle the pass, but he gets it back. Price 
Driving baseline, back out to Wagner. He'll hold it in the corner and move up to the top of the key. Now he'll drive to the right side, back to Price. Corey going to put it on the floor. Driving in, hop step, floater, no good. Rebound Durst. So a lid being put over the basket for Anderson right now as they've got the bench units in. Three-pointer no good. Ball hits the floor before Corey Price picks up that rebound. Now a minute to go. They get it to Armour. It's poked away. So Armour is kind of removed from the play. He'll have to get back into it. and They'll re just, just reset for Wagner. Mike driving in. Back out to Hull. Hull's three-pointer is no good. Once again, lid on the basket. Here's Campbell Duncan with the follow. It's good. Campbell, five points. Youngster getting on the board here in the first half. Now driving in with it is Torres. He loses it. Now here comes Wagner. And Mike falls down, and that's going to be a foul called against the Maroons. Anderson will head to the line for a one and one. Finally into the bonus here. It's a good opportunity for Anderson to get some uh, less experienced guys, some reps here. as we got a mass substitution and the starters are back for the Trojans. With 30 seconds, want to make sure they can get a stop and maybe another basket. And it looks like Austin will have some halftime uh, entertainment for you. Some young ladies going to be dancing. Ain't it fun? Now going to the bench is Edward Gonzalez. Front end's good for Mike, and now every Anderson starter into the scoring column. Took him up until the last uh, couple seconds here of the second quarter. But it's done, and Mike Wagner into the scoring column. He's, of course, made a difference in many other ways, but a lot of this game he has had to miss because he picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter. But he makes those two free throws. Yay, Mike. Back to a 25-point lead. I believe that's the largest of the game for the Trojans. Now Wazell will bring it up. They get it to the corner. Now they almost lost that out of bounds, but Boric has it on the post. He's going to go right at Langley, turning, spinning, floating is no good. Nate Langley all over that one. 14 seconds left. Anderson will have another opportunity to put some points on the board. Corey Price still in the game for Whitlow, by the way. Here's Francis. Jack going to take it right at Durst. Crosses over, gets him to the floor. Francis stepping back. Can't get it to go. Can't repay the move with the crazy finish. Jack Francis putting on the handles. He sent Durst packing. But first half is over with 25 point lead for the Anderson Trojans. It's 45 to 20. Dominant showing by the Trojans so far. I want to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast, Howie Breen and Herman, as well as Enco Tech. And for us at Vipe, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy. Shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. I think we got all the way through that half without taking a single break, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. I have been Jack Farrell. We've got nine and a half minutes of game clock before we get ready for this second half. Both teams now with zero fouls, which is good for Anderson as they were flirting with the double bonus for a lot of that first half. But no matter, they still lead it by 25, and we'll be back after this. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 13 back in, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibe.com. 
vype.com. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vipe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts. But did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. 
Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one of a kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Back into it. Still got two minutes before we get started for the ultimate half here. Anderson leading by 25. Dominant display by the Trojans on both sides of the court. The only reason Austin High even has 20 is that Anderson couldn't really stop fouling. They were well into the double bonus in that half. And if Anderson can just clean that up, it'll be smooth sailing from then, from, the, uh, from here on out for the Trojans. Team high, 12 points for Nate Langley. Francis has nine, and Bennett Blackerby has eight. Campbell Duncan behind them with five. It's been a good showing. A lot of guys getting involved here. Mitchell Whitlow playing some key minutes. Wagner held out with foul trouble. Low in the scoring column, just two points for him, but... Couple guys coming in and knocking down shots off the bench. Fred Dale hit a three-pointer. Campbell Duncan, five points for him. Ball watch. Just got hit. Actually for the first time. So we're doing pretty good. Anderson being crisp with their passes to the corner. They see a, a little bit more turnoverage with this uh with this Austin High group, if you know what I'm saying. Uh no, I don't mean that. Um <laughs> had too many too many errant passes either. But They'll head over to the bench, as will the Trojans, and we are ready for half number two. It's the best half. Pretty quick game here. We're only uh, about 45 minutes in. And we're already ready to uh, to get ready for the second half. Usually we're not, uh, not that quick with it. Most of the games only take about an hour and a half. But I believe... If this pace continues, then we should be out of here before that. Get started on your Friday. And hey, when you're down here, might as well hit the, hit the town, am I right? We're right here on <laughs> Cesar Chavez. Well, might as well go to 6th, all of us. Let's all go to 6th together. Not the students, of course. And I'm 21, so it's fine. Going to hang out with all you Northwest Hills moms. A lot of fun. I know all the cool spots. That's not true. <laughs> but here we go Anderson going to start out with the ball it's Mitchell Whitlow to inbound so here's Wagner bringing the ball up for the Trojans into the corner for Francis now Whitlow gets it back to Jack and it's Langley ooh they had him rolling but they missed him but he still got it he's going to go right at Miller too strong for the big guy Nate Langley's night continues he's got 14 Trojans up to 47 points in this one. Driving in, kicking it back out, and pulling up. Shot's going to be an air ball, and not able to save it from going out of bounds is John Torres. Maroon's going to put on the press here. Here's Langley. Facing up, kicks it across the court. Francis is going to try his luck from three, and that's another one for Jack Francis. 12 points on the game. He's catching up to Langley. The Trojans have the 50-burger. They lead by 30. It's their largest lead of the game. Here's Gonzalez, and that's blocked by Blackerby. Say that five times fast. Torres gets it back outside. Now here's Miller. He's going to dribble into a jumper. That's no good. Too strong. Batted around. And into the hands of Nate Langley, he'll find Wagner. And pushing are the Trojans. And that layup's going to be good for Anderson. And I think we're going to have a foul after the play. 
That should count. Wagner had clearly gotten it off. So the basket, he got it off. The basket should count, right? Because the foul occurred after. So we shall see. Right now they're not going to give it to him. So do not count the basket for Wagner. Instead, it's just a foul. We'll stay at 50-30. Now into the corner, he's just going to go for it. No good. Rebound underneath for Miller. Launching that one was Mendez. Now the shot is good for Moshe. They finally get one from downtown. Here's Wagner. Crosses to the right. He gets across the midcourt line and loses it into the air, but it's a good enough pass. Langley with it. Whitlow now working around the perimeter. Finds Francis. They're leaving Jack a little bit too open, but he's going to take it to the basket to go up and under, and he can't convert. Now we're on the other way. Here's Gonzalez driving in. Gets into the air. O'Shea going to try another three, and he can't heat up. So just one. And they're going to get Blackerby for a travel. As hmm. Here's Gonzalez. He gets it into Miller. Now back to Gonzalez. Edward with two points in the game. Lucas Miller going right at Dale, and Fred draws the charge. Good job, Fred Dale, sacrificing his body. And they gave Trojans two points. On the other end. I think that'll have to be credited to Wagner, as unless I'm forgetting, I think they counted that basket a little late. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I feel like I'm paying a lot of attention. So I'll, I'll go ahead and credit to Mike. Mike with four points in the game. He's bringing the ball up now. Trying to get Mendez off of him. He'll work his way around the key. Over to Blackerby. Bennett going to try another three. That's no good. That hit the stanchion, so that should be out of bounds, and it is. Bennett not getting the hot shooting night that we are used to from him, but he still has eight points, so it's hardly been quiet. Two and a half gone in the third. That's another turnover. Here comes Blackerby for Anderson, pushing ahead. Can't quite get it to Francis, and that's saved nicely by Miller. Trojan's getting back. Now O'Shea thought about the three. Pass fake. Now instead, Bennett almost comes away with another one. Does. Francis gets it. Now here come the Trojans in transition. Jack going to pull back a little bit. We had Whitlow trailing if he wanted it, but that's going to be knocked out of bounds, and that should stay here, and it does. Five to go here in the third. As we are swimming through this, uh, this game. Now up top, it's Whitlow. Now outside for Wagner. Wagner driving in, gets to the basket, kicks it out for Dale. Another three-pointer attempted and good. Fred Dale, two for two from downtown. And that's going to be a timeout from Austin. Anderson pushing their lead to 32, definitely the largest of the game, 55 to 23. Going to go ahead and take a break of our own on the broadcast. like to thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be right back. Oop, never mind, Jazzler's broken. The, <laughs> as always, so we're just going to keep it here. The, uh, you never, uh, never count on uh, that program. It's a bit of a running gag at the company, to be honest. You always have to quit it and start it over. Got it back up. It's not too hard. I've, uh, I've started doing this thing where I leave the task manager open so I can force quit it whenever I need to. Tips and tricks of the trade, if I may. 4.43 to go here in the third. And it will be maroon basketball. There's Trey Mendez. Still not quite comfortable with this camera setup, to be honest, as Mendez has it over there on the wing. They get it up top to Miller. And I like to have him out there. He rolls to the basket. They get it back. Mendez trying. That's no good. Rebound goes to Campbell Duncan. He finds his PG, and they are off and running. Behind Dale, he kind of fumbles it. But Bennett Blackerby now open for three, and he can't get him the assist. Dale saves it. What a play by Fred Dale. 
Now Black will be going to try and repay Wagner this time, and he can. You can't give Bennett two on the same possession. Third Trojan player into double figures with that. And now that's a three-pointer on the other end for Austin High School. Here comes Francis. Back to Wagner. They turn it over. Now driving in and can't get it off the glass. Tough rebound goes to Austin High School, but Wagner pokes it away. Now they're out and running. Wagner lob ahead to Blackerby. Pass back, touch to Wagner, but it's going to be another turnover. A little bit of sloppy play for Anderson, kicking it into the corner for O'Shea. Gets the blow by for Wagner, sets his feet. Can't get it. Foul going to go on O'Shea as he and Mike are getting a little testy with each other. It'll be Anderson Ball off the foul. Two team fouls already for Austin High School in this half. We're halfway through this third quarter. Anderson still with zero. Campbell Duncan looking for Wagner. That's uh, it's a tough place to get it to him. But they'll back off, and now Campbell Duncan pushing. He's got Blackerby betting into the corner. Ooh, they, they left him. He could have gone up with that, but then going to let the offense do the work here. Price getting ready to check in for the Trojans. Here's Dale. Now into the corner for Duncan. He's going to drive into the lane, get to the basket, and a little too strong. It was a nice move, just couldn't get the finish. Now bring the ball up is Trey Mendez. He's going to come in. Can't get it to go. Good defense from Wagner. He falls to the ground. Here comes Mike. As this is a hectic third quarter. Wagner over to Blackerby. He's going to pull up and shoot. Yes, sir. Bennett Blackerby hits two in a row here in the third, and the Anderson Trojans are extending their lead ever further. 61 points for them so far. Here's Azell with it. Kicks it. Mendez with an open look. No good once again. Rebound Dale. Bennett Blackerby out of nowhere has tied the team high with 14 points as he's the leading scorer of this team this season, and he just has a way of knocking down enough outside shots. Over to Francis, he's going to drive baseline, gets to the basket, and Jack wanted to dunk it. Just a little bit too much. I feel like the next uh, breakaway option we have for Jack in transition, we might get a, a throw down on the other end. 14 points now for Jack, three Trojans with that number. 63-26. Now into the post. That's some good defense from Dale. Another air ball for the Maroons as here's Wagner pushing. He'll step back. Two minutes to go in the quarter as Wagner, I think he wanted Campbell to, uh, to cut to the basket there, but miscommunication, another turnover. Now here's O'Shea. Wagner doing a good job of knocking that one away, but instead it's a wide open basket for O'Shea. That's uh, it's kind of the give and take with a, a player like Wagner is he's going to be very aggressive, and sometimes you're just going to kind of fart your way out of a play like that. Now Blackerby feeling it. Yes, sir, Bennett Blackerby from downtown. His third of the quarter. He's got 17 points. Now on the other end, here's Mendez. He's going to keep shooting, and he gets this one to go. Trey Mendez, two points in the game. They're into the 30s now. It's 66 to 30. Now Campbell Duncan with it in the high post. Working his way around. He hands it off to Bennett, and he's going to try it again. This one too short. Rebound going to go to nobody. Out of bounds. Maroon ball. And we have some subs. They've got Langley back into the game. Blackerby heads to the bench with 17 points. For Anderson, it'll be Donahoe, Whitlow, Page, Langley, and Price. Already getting some good chatter from this Anderson team on defense. Mendez loses it. Price dives to the floor to save it, but Mendez still has it, and this should probably be a foul going against Price. Nope, instead they'll give Austin High the time out. Go ahead and take that one with them. There's 50 seconds left in the quarter. We'll be right back. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, got in, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com.
50 seconds left. Anderson with a comfortable 36-point lead here in the third quarter on the road. You've got another game tomorrow, so it's a good opportunity to get up on a team and get your starters some rest. Langley and Whitlow still out there for the Trojans here into the third quarter. Bennett Blackerby taking over here in the third. Nine quick points. This is Jack Francis with 14 and Nate Langley with 14. Nate on the court looking to uh, extend that. This here's Mendez crossing over, working his way through on Price. Flicks it up and in. That's back-to-back -back baskets for Trey Mendez, who had been struggling all night. Now here's Price, crosses over, crosses behind the back. Corey gets it into Langley. Back to Price. They're, looks like they're going to hold for the final shot. Just 25 seconds left. He'll put it on the floor. He does. Back out for Whitlow. Now back to Corey. 15 seconds left. This is a little PG. Might try to bomb away here. Loses it for Mendez. Crosses over. Loses it again. Just tries to fire it away. Mendez knocks it out of bounds. And he let Corey hear it. But score remains... 34-point ball game. Now Price with a chance to get pick up an assist here at the end of the quarter. Now Langley gets it back to Price. Price is going to take it to the basket. Dumps it off to Donahoe. What a find to end the quarter. Corey Price dishing CP3. Making it look right. So now at the end of the third quarter, we've got eight or yeah, we've got a, just a few more minutes of basketball for you ahead. Eight minutes. And Anderson leads it by 36 points. Going to go ahead and take another break. like to thank our sponsors in just a moment. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back in for quarter number four, Anderson with a healthy lead and we have the bench squad in for now, it's Corey Price, Jackson Gill, number 12, Andrew Alexander into the game, Liam Donahoe, as well as Colin Page. Eight minutes on the clock, 68-32. Imagine that these starters might be done and just want to give it up for Bennett Blackerby one more time as Durst has it at the top of the key. This is the first time in a couple years that Anderson has really just had a pure sharpshooter like that, just the ability to drain those shots from the perimeter. He's got 17 tonight as Durst gets to the basket, lays it up, lays it in, and the foul. The legend himself to the line for one. That's his name, legend. Right now the Trojans doubling up Austin High. Durst can uh, make that uh, not a true statement with this free throw. Got it. 35 points on the night for the Maroons. Here's Price. Works his way across the court. Making his way on Mendez. Here's Price. Excuse me, Gill in the corner. Price with it up top now. Tried to spin his way out of that, but instead just lost it. He was trying to find Alexander, but Alexander made his cut a little too early, it looks like. He was trying to flush his way to the three-pointer. and This entire team just constantly has smiles on their face. These bench guys just come in and just have an absolute blast. Liam Donahoe, you've never seen someone smile more on a basketball court than maybe him and Derek Armour are the two. Just always cheesing. So he's got Mendez locked up here. And Durst steps out of bounds. Nice play there by Liam Donahoe. He's always given quality minutes. Uh, anytime he gets into the game, he's a little foul prone. But other than that, provides a little defensive burst. He's got good touch around the basket. Here he is. Gets it off to Page. Page going to take a three. Of course. Of course. Colin Page from downtown. He's got five. That's his second make of the game in as many attempts. 
Now driving in, trying to get all the way into the basket and scoring is Ian Mitchell. Page swooping in to try and block that one, but it's no good as Price, he's going to get fouled. Trojans have put 70 on Austin High School. It's a good chance for them to make it an 80 piece here tonight. They only need nine more in six and a half minutes. Never easy. But here comes Price. They're going to keep bombing away. I can't blame them. Here's Gonzalez defending Corey. Corey spins out of it. He draws the double. Alexander can't come up with the pass. Here's Donahoe. He's going to take it to the basket himself. He lost it, and that's going to be a foul going against the Trojans. Borch there on the steal. Neither of these teams are going to probably be into the bonus unless they really start hacking. And with, <laughs> with Donahoe and Page, you, you, you might see that. These guys are some aggressive defenders, and they like to go for all these loose balls. Now quickly dribbling into a three, no good. It was Mitchell trying to cut into the deficit a little bit. Pat his stats. Now six minutes to go. Here's Gill. Get it to Page in the corner. Colin's going to try it. Yes, sir. Colin Page from downtown once again. He's up to eight, nearly another Trojan into double figures. They've got three of those. Now here comes Gonzalez driving in, got into the air, kicks it to the corner. Now here's Azell going to try it. That's going to be no good. Rebound batted away. Price knocked it out of bounds. Couple more threes. Keep shooting, boys. <laughs> As Donahoe is going to check out, Kalen Hole into the game. As Page tried to come up with the steal. Here's Henry Simmons with it on the wing. He gets it over to the corner. It's Gonzalez. Simmons now cutting through. Gonzalez working on Hole. He gets around him. Gets to the basket. Lays it up and in. Page with the foul. Edward Gonzalez picks up the and one basket. That's his second make of the game. So I believe no. Um, it's his first make of the game. He had two free throws. So first field goal, and this will be his third attempt from the line. Rattles in and out, and good job by Hole to clean that up. 74-39. Here comes Price. Pushes Page through. Now it's Hole. Hole getting the handoff to Page. Page now working his way around the perimeter. Kicks it to Gill. Gill driving in for Anderson. Dumps it off. Gets it to Hole, and Hole's shot is blocked. And that's going to go out of bounds, and it will stay here. 5.17 to go. Price looking. Gets it into Gill. Now back outside. Here's Alexander. He's going to put it on the floor. Get it to Page. Colin going to drive baseline, gets to the basket, throws it up and can't get it to go, but it'll be free throws. Colin Page. I, he <laughs> he's such a football player, but it's it, it works. You, you remember like when you would see those D linemen get in the gym and just start bombing threes, and you'd be like, what are you doing? For some reason for Colin Page, it just absolutely works, and he has nine points tonight. He's just so active. It seems like he doesn't get tired out there. Uh, Coach Pittsburgh just plays him for short bursts of minutes, and that's the perfect way to use a player like this, just all energy, just such a spark plug for this offense and for this defense as Hole almost comes away with the steal. And finally he does. Pass was to, for Durst. Gill's pass tip, but he gets it right back. And now Page, he's going to try again from three. You bet! Colin Page from downtown. 12 points. Anderson's got 78. Gonzalez going to try again. He can't complete the duel. Here's Colin Page just keeping it in his hands. This man can't miss right now. Heat check, Colin. Heat check. Oh, no, he's doing the right thing, passing to his teammates. How boring. But <laughs> here's Hull. His shot blocked at the rim, but he gets his own rebound. Pass back out to Alexander. Oh, shoot, this ball. Oh, he loses it. It's uh, kicked out of bounds. Who kicked it? And they're going to go ahead and give it to Austin High. He did the right thing. That was great. A good vision, dribbling it up the court. A lot of times when you've seen three threes in a quarter go down for yourself, you, uh, you start to get a little tunnel vision. But good job by Colin Page to find the open man, even though he couldn't convert. That's the right basketball play. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Price as Derek Armour checks in for Colin Page. 
on that last dead ball at 78 to 39. Now here's O'Shea, gets it in. O'Shea gonna pull for three. That's no good off the back iron. Good rebound by Durst. Going up and high pointing that thing for the young man. Here's Gonzalez working on Price. He crosses over, Corey reaches in. Tough call, but I think it's the right one. And now this game's starting to grind to a halt. They'll get Price out in for Campbell Duncan. So I assume it's gonna be uh, Jackson Gill running the show. Here's Gonzalez, working on Duncan. Good job, Campbell staying in front. That's some good defense and a nice job for Armour knocking it out of bounds. Derek felt like uh, in his minutes early in the season, struggled pretty mightily, but number sense, something clicked for him in that tournament when he came in and replaced Langley. He's played a lot better, and I think he's really carved out a nice rotation role for himself as that one's knocked out of bounds once again by Duncan. Donahoe back in. And Andrew Alexander going to check on out. Got a timeout from the Maroons. I think we're going to go ahead and take it with them. It'll probably be our last break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. I've been Jack Farrell. Coming back for more. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Back in it, 3.48 to go, Anderson. I mean, the game is over, but you still got some time on the clock. It's been a great showing on uh, pretty much every facet of the game for the Anderson Trojans. The only one to harp on would probably be fouls, turnovers? I would say turnovers. Um, but after picking up 10 team fouls, well, well uh, yeah, over 10 team fouls in the first half. Only five here in the second with four minutes to go. And this is uh, now the bench unit. So great showing overall for the Trojans. Maroon still working hard as that's another foul underneath. Come on. Stop fouling. As the rhythm of this game is, is non-existent as we're getting a stoppage every possession now. Alexander going to come in for Armour. Gonzalez going to pass it in. Gets it outside. Here's O'Shea. Duncan. Now for Simmons. Driving in is Durst. Durst to the basket. Gets it to go. Another tough look at the rim for Legend Durst. He picked up an and one bucket earlier. That's his second finish through contact. Here into the 40s. Here's Campbell Duncan turning, spinning, floating. Can't get it to go as Donahoe nearly saves that. As once Campbell really puts all the stuff that he's, all these flashes together, he's going to be a heck of a player. He's still incredibly young. Of course, just a sophomore for Anderson. Here's Gonzalez, a corner three. And look at that angle. 44 now for Austin. Campbell Duncan bringing the ball up for the Trojans. Love to see that. So here's Gill, crosses over, got a nice little dribble move, and he knocks it down, the step back three. Jackson Gill, another three-pointer for the Trojans, and they are into the 80s. It's 81 to 44. Now O'Shea to the basket, gets a layup on the other end. Eighty-one forty-six, two and a half to go. Duncan over to Hull. Duncan crossing over, getting to the basket. Again, too strong, but he's going to be fouled on this one. Two, two, two to go. First foul shot rattles out. Campbell has five, knocked down a three in the first half. Yay team. He'll try to avoid going over two, and he can't. It was a little to the left on both of those, but good board by Hull. 
And now a three, that's short. Donahoe diving, hole saving. Throwing it back outside Alexander. Kicking over for another open three for Gill. Can't get this one. Donahoe saves another board. Puts it on the ground to escape the traffic. Now Campbell Duncan in the corner. Get caught in the air. Back to Jackson Gill and they'll hold and reset. That's a good call for the Trojans. Under two to play. So all in all, it will be a very short game. Under an hour and a half when it's all said and done. And the Anderson Trojans took care of business here at Austin High School. Gill crossing over on Durst. Finding Alexander. Alexander going to pull for three. That's another one for Anderson. Right now, only three players not in the scoring column as Bazarian is out tonight. Hole, Price, and Armour still need buckets. Here's Mitchell. Spinning, floating, no good. Rebound, Donahoe lost it. Gill saves it high into the air. Now down. Back to Gonzalez. He's caught in the air. Now back outside. That's going to go into the backcourt. It'll be Anderson basketball. 1-10 to go. It's Andrew Alexander. There's so many guys with just three points here tonight. Bazarian's out, so it's Armour Hull in Price. And they've yet to get a basket up. Hull is out there. His teammates are telling him to put one up. Looks like Armour and Price, though, might be done for the game. This guy's got some more rotation minutes, but now it's Gill with it. And Coach Pittsford just telling him to hold it until they make him shoot. So here's Gill driving in. Gets to the basket. Loses it. That's a lot of contact, but not always going to call that right now. Here's Simmons. 50 seconds to go. Here's O'Shea. Into the corner for Gonzalez. He's going to drive in on Donahoe. Liam doing a great job staying in front of everybody that's uh, tried to attack him here tonight. But didn't have great position on that rebound. It's knocked out of bounds. But it's still his Trojan basketball. Gonzalez knocked that one out. It's Hull on the inbound. Here's Duncan back to Kalen. Now Jackson has it. Just going to have to worry about getting it up across. He goes behind the back. No separation. Gets it across. 30 seconds. Gets it to Alexander. Now cross court. Here's Hull. Now Anderson just dribbling out. There's 18 seconds left. Kalen with the ball. You have to put it on the court. Loses it up for a second. Instead, he'll get it to Donahoe. Now Gill, eight seconds left, and that is all that she wrote. Anderson with a dominant win here tonight after that last triple made it 84-46, to and that is your final score from Austin High. Trojans with a dominant show in here tonight. They'll hit it once again in just a few hours, 16 hours until their next game at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. That'll be down in Buda against the Hayes, not Rebels, the Hawks. Isn't that fun? A little, uh, little flavor, a little new nugget for tomorrow. It's the first time that the Hayes Hawks and the Anderson Trojans will ever play. So we'll start the series at 0-0 tomorrow, and Anderson going to try and pick up a victory against a Hayes team that uh, enters at 8 and 7. So pretty similar record as Anderson. But now Trojans push it to 9 and 7 with a victory here tonight. For the Trojans, it's a good scoring night for a lot of guys. Mitchell Whitlow, Jackson Gill, Andrew Alexander all had three. Liam Donahoe had two. Mike Wagner, another slow scoring day for him. He just had four points, but by no means. Uh, is that really indicative of what he did on the court? Once again, just an all-around type of player. Campbell Duncan with five. Fred Dale, two triples of his own. He had six. And rounding it out was two 14-point performances from Bennett Blackerby and Nate Langley and a 17-point performance for Bennett Blackerby. Hit a lot of threes there in that third quarter. He's just a registered sharp shooter. He's an excellent player. And Colin Page with some excellent minutes off the bench. Love to watch that kid play. But I think that'll do it for us here on Vipe. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank our sponsors on the broadcast one more time. Howry Breen and Herman. Oh, got that. Uh, Howry Breen and Herman as well as Encotech. And for Vipe, we want to thank the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors just one more time. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, 
Back to school also means back to sport, and from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. That'll do it for us here. We will see all of you tomorrow. It'll be the Trojans and the Hawks. Here, Anderson dominating the Maroons 84 to 46. An all around great showing for this Trojan team. And for now, see all of you down on sixth. I'd like to thank you once again for tuning into the broadcast. It'll be fun. Got a busy weekend of Trojan basketball. We'll be back soon. Jack Farrell signing off.